first thing that I would say straight off the bat is um, we don't know it all. Um, to, to give a little bit of a context or background to this, um, Ollie would have would have approached myself and Craig initially going back last June. So we kind of have been sitting together meeting and then obviously the group uh, expanded as we went along. So just to give a bit of background, I suppose, of myself, um, I'm conscious that, that people might know who I am. So, so Hugh Lyons is my name. Um, I'm a secondary school teacher by trade. You'll probably know by one of the slides that's, that's coming up. Um, I teach up in Castle Blaney in Monaghan. Um, so I would have played underage at the club, a little bit of junior, wouldn't have represented at senior level. Um, my coaching journey, I suppose, began with the academy squads um, with Loud under 14 and 15. And I was coach, uh, part of the coaching team and the, the Martin senior team for four years. Um, then went on, coached the, the Loud minors, Loud junior team, and, and you know, uh, obviously involved in coaching school. So I suppose I, I have a good experience in that regard, you know, from youth to adult. But uh, as I would say, you know, first of all, I, I, as a, I don't claim to know it all this evening and hopefully uh, this evening that we learn something as we're going along. So Craig alluded to this the last day, you know, um, Craig alluded to this, sorry, the last day, you know, with, with what we're going with our coaching pathway, our player pathway and our team structures. But I suppose before we get on to any of that, you know, we have to probably come up with some kind of an idea of a, of a philosophy. Now, it's a word that's kind of, I suppose, bandied about a lot that, you know, perhaps we we don't have a, a great understanding of. So I suppose what we're trying to get out of tonight's session is two things. We want to kind of come up with, well, what is an Ave Martin coaching philosophy? The second term I put up there on the screen is, is the jocks way. So that's just something we've, we've come up with that, you know, we'll tease out as the night progresses and, and, and hopefully get a bit of an idea on that. So I suppose the first thing I want you to kind of do is have a little look at, at the picture. So I know a smaller version of this was, was put on at the meeting on Friday. And the question I want to pose, and I want you to kind of think about and reflect as we're going on this evening, is, is for you, what is coaching? And you know, you can maybe think of it in your head if you wanted to write it down, somewhere or jotted into your phone like how would you define the thing for you what does it mean because i suppose you know for the 20 odd individuals that's here on the call this evening you know we'll all be coming to to with various levels of different experience and it might mean different things so it's depending on what stage of our journey we're at so i want you to con consider that have that at the forefront of your mind as we go on and uh, we'll come back to it maybe later on so I suppose we always start with the what. Look, what is a coach club coaching philosophy? And you know, kind of we're doing a little bit of work on this. Kind of what I came up with is that it's something that's created from within. And um, it's something that you know should be created by our club, by the coaches that are here this evening, and indeed the players. So apart from everything else, you know, with philosophy, sometimes what we see is that there's all this hybrid thinking and to be quite honest, it's not realistic, it's not achievable, and indeed it's not sustainable. So I suppose what we're trying to do this evening is to stimulate conversations. You know, if we're going to come up with a club philosophy, it's not just a club coaching committee putting forward, this is the way we're doing it. That, that's that's not sustainable. That's not, you know, realistic. So I suppose the whole thing tonight is that we don't have any egos here, that this is a collaborative approach. As I said to you from the beginning, I don't know it all. I'm bringing my certain viewpoint you know, other members of the coaching committee will be doing the same, and I'm sure you will do likewise. So this is going to just be a working document, and it's very much based on, I suppose, your contributions this evening. And to make this work, you know, it's all about collaboration, and we're going to learn from each other, and and hopefully, hopefully, um, we'll learn a lot from that. So, why a philosophy? Well, I have two kind of images there, and for me. The idea of a coaching philosophy is basically that it gives us a direction. OK, you have that that visual of the compass or the kind of idea of the North Star that really it, it should guide us in all all walks of, of our coaching journey with the club. So I suppose what we want to look at is why, why are we looking to put this down this evening or why are we looking to stimulate thought? It's, it's supposed to think about what are we looking to achieve? And for me, it would be that 
ultimately that will have a consistency across the club in terms of our decision making, in terms of working together. And that that idea of we're all going on a journey and that that journey is a collective journey. And I suppose what that will lead to is that we make better decisions as a club. And ultimately, you know, that the club, I think Crouch alluded to, that we're aiming as high as we can be to be the very, very best we can be. We're doing so many good things. But for me, you're always the best clubs and the best organisations are always moving from a possession or a position of strength to get to that next level. So that's kind of where we're thinking of. So, you know, be thinking about that purpose, that North Star. That's what we're trying to get to. And that's why we're the philosophy. So when we got thinking, we, we thought about this here. And this was the idea of what we've coined the jocks way. So I suppose when we're looking at a philosophy, what we're looking at for me is kind of three key things. And we are gonna gonna work in, in into groups now in a moment because um you know I find that these things I think they work far better when when there's an interaction. So there's three things that I, I want you to consider. The first is so what makes us unique as a club? If we want to come up with a philosophy, what's our vision? What's our unique selling point? Like what do we stand for as a club? So don't worry about, you know. Uh, performance or winning any rest but what do we stand what makes us unique okay because you know we could come in here we could take a philosophy from from Dublin or kind of any other successful teams but that doesn't work because it doesn't belong to us so what makes us unique I suppose the second question then relates to our vision for the future like what kind of club do we want to have or what kind of club do we want to be and then I suppose well what would success look for us as a club going forward and that's the culture so I suppose what I'm going to get you to do here we're, we're going to set a, a timer and I'm going to put you into breakout rooms in a second and I'll let Craig in but what I want you to do in your groups I'm going to give you about eight minutes okay now that might be very long or depending on the strength of the conversations might be very short but what I'd like you to do is to consider those three things jot some ideas down and um, for each group, then I'd like, you know, to that maybe we'd have one spokesperson that just comes in, feeds that information back. And I suppose what's the logic or what's the thought process here? This is our collaboration. This is where you can have your say, because as I said at the beginning, this is a collaborative approach. It's not just me running this. It's not just Ollie. It's not just Yvonne. It's not Sam. It's not Craig. It, it's all the club. And, and that's what we really, really value your input. So. Craig, I'll just hand it over there to you. You can maybe explain the breakout rooms for us and uh, we'll go from there if that's okay. Okay, folks, just take note of the questions there um, Noini has for you. So the breakout room will go for eight minutes and just between yourselves, have that discussion on the questions that are down questions because I've been in breakout rooms a minute. And okay, so just yourselves. Take note of them questions he's asking you. How room that said before would be around if don't log out of the breakout room. What happens is I will close the breakout room after eight minutes and it takes about right back to where you exactly are now. Okay. So I'm gonna start the rooms now and give it about 10, 15 seconds and you land in the room and just start your discussion straight away with the people at the if anyone has any problems or questions or, or anything, um, use the WhatsApp, use the club coach and WhatsApp. I'll take a picture of the questions now and I'll put it in for you. Hello, Crouchy. Hello, Crouchy. Yeah. Sorry, I, I clicked join room then and just knocked me out of the meeting altogether. So uh, I, I have an option to join the room here. I'm going to try it again now. Just give me yeah. a second.
Which I'm just wondering is there's quite a few people there. Are they not in the group or? No, there's seven in the first group, six in the second, six in the third, and then the room four seems to be a problem. But I've moved everybody out of it, so I'll just delete that one. No, why that didn't open. So you see, there's three people still, I think. There's a Ray, Dinger, and John, I see here. Lads, is there anybody here that can hear me that's not in one of the meetings? Just let me know. Yeah, John here, Craig. I'm still here. Well, do you know what? We could just use this one as a meeting, Craig. What about that? Yeah, yeah. So if we'll just mute ourselves and let, let, let you work away then, lads. Great, thanks a lot. For some reason, John, it won't let me click your name to assign you to a group. It's Your name is there, but it's it's just completely... It won't let me. It won't let me do that with it for some reason. High security. Same with Ollie's name as well. Ollie and yourself for some reason. I don't know why. But I think everybody else. I'm just going to dip into the other room, Liney. There, if you want to have a chat there about it. Yeah. So look, I don't know. Maybe if you if you want to meet the mics, lads, there, and just we can use this as a room. Look, I'm conscious. I don't want to be pushing that and forward. So I'll let you walk away. So you know that first one, maybe you know. Let's just work away at that. If you, could, do you, want me, you can see those questions, all right. So it's what makes us unique as a club. I'll just mute your mic and let you just work away if that's all right. John, I'll unmute you there. So, like, what, what, what were you thinking there, or what was any no. thoughts? Or? Well, I wasn't sure who was in the meeting with, <laughs> being honest. That's my first thought. Um, I don't know. I was talking to Crouchy and stuff like that at, then, uh, before and Ali about this. Um, I don't know. I just think it's very high, It's a very complex situation, picking what your values are and what you, where you want to go. Like, so. Um, well, you want to make sure that you're developing all the players that you have, to make, giving them, challenging each one to the, to the level that they're at. That means players that are weak. And so you're, you're trying to keep them involved and keeping them going and trying to get them to the, to, to the level where they can make a contribution maybe to a, to a game or, or, you know, feel part of what's going on in the field. Uh, and the other thing would be that you've other fellas that might be excellent, may, may have high maybe uh, potential to be uh, elite and you have to make sure that they're getting the right challenges as well so that in itself yeah. is conflict and that's where your difficulties rise so it might have a con not necessarily but the, with the numbers with, with numbers that we were used to coaching uh you will have a problem meeting both of those objectives and that's where yeah, yeah. it's difficult in terms of d ding or any thoughts on the whole thing or Oh. Hey, I'm just off. Can you hear me? Yeah. No. Yeah, can you hear yet? Yeah. yeah, that's grand. Yeah. No, as I said, John just said uh, myself, and I didn't know who I was talking to there. I was offline there for a second. Yeah, it's much the same. Like your, your values are. I think every, every person's going to have different values on it. But do we all have to have the same values? I I, I don't know. I don't think I don't technically agree with it yeah we kind of have the same vision but values are kind of different and hard like enjoyment is one of the main things you're going to start once you're dealing with underage kids 
that's mm. that's the basic thing. And once they're enjoying it, their the skill levels and all that will come on board as well. And they'll enjoy it more and they'll want to come more. The vision end of it, the vision end of it should be the same for everyone. Like your, 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 your vision is progression through the underage ranks the whole way up through. Hopefully, please God, it, when they all, not everyone, not everyone's going to do it, but their main vision, and I think most kids' visions are going to be looking at what the, lead, the senior team done last year. Is they want to be there. They want to be into that sort of situation. And that's, I think, what most kids on our own should be. You know, yeah. and, and the likes of what John was saying there as well uh, about the amount of kids training, you're going to have different levels of skill levels on it as well. And, and how, as a club, we could adapt to that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it's, it, it's not that easy, as I say, when you have John probably made a fair point, you know, with the, with the, with the big numbers as well. So I suppose that's, that's our challenge here of, of how, do we, how do we put that structure in place, you know? And I suppose yeah. one of the things I would, I would, I would have is, in mind is, like, you, you want to get make sure they're all playing football, they're all training, um, you know, they're all getting enjoyment out of it, so they're all feeling part of it. But again, at the same time, that I think uh, discussing this with Crouch, uh, uh, yeah, I think you might. There's times then that you might have a fella, like if you look at the the the, the lads who in, in in our club who are playing at the elite level, like so for county footballers, most of them played a couple, you know, up up ahead of themselves growing up. And that means then, because you, I feel, you know, you hear it bandied about that, like, you know, the, can't, the fella underage can't take a place of a fella who's a year over his age or whatever. And mm-hmm. I would say certainly at the, at the earlier ages, that should not be happening. But at some point then, it does turn into a competitive game. And that lad who has potential to be elite has to be challenged as much as the other guy so therefore you, you, that's where i see the conflict that you might have a conflict but you might have a guy that you're trying to make sure he's getting enough game to be, uh, but, and then you also have to make sure that you're not restricting the development of another player so that he can play he might need to play up the years you know and yeah. but at the same time you're not you're not leaving another guy <laughs> so i suppose your vision is where do you want to be? What's your success? As you were saying, back in the room. Back in. Is everyone back? That, that was quick. I'll be quiet. <laughs> so, I think that's everyone, Crouchy, is it? Yeah, that should be all the rooms are closed now. Okay, so listen, uh, I know that for, for some there was a bit of an issue technically or whatever, but. Hopefully there was even just to start off a conversation. Look, the end goal isn't going to come this evening. Uh, and that's not what we're trying to do. It's just basically stimulate that talk, get us thinking about it. And, you know, from talking to the couple of people in, in our own group that it's just not an easy thing to, to, to nail down. But look, and I suppose it's it's just to see where we're at, where our starting point is. So, uh, Crouch, you have a think list of groups there, have you? For... For the breakout room, so or even if we just yeah, want to open yeah. it out to whoever and whoever's yeah. a spokesperson, maybe if they want to just kind of just throw out a couple of things that they had for each of those. I'm going to share my screen here now again, folks. Yeah, we can see it there already, Lenny. Oh, you can, um, right? Okay. So basically, room one was Patrick Sullivan, Julie, Stephen Murphy, Owen <laughs> Callahan, Claire McGuigan, Joseph Walsh, and Isabel Murphy. If one of them, if one of you guys want to jump in there and just give us a quick lo- load there and watch your group basically ended up but it would be great yeah, thanks crouch I'll, I'll jump in here and then others can can add to it if uh, if they wish um we've had a really I, well I, I thought it was a really good conversation the breakout room worked really well uh, on group on question one about the the sort of the unique aspects of the club at the moment our values we just spoke about things like our, our strong fan base vocal and, and supportive of all teams the level of facilities that we currently have and just the appreciation uh, that we all should have for them uh, was mentioned. Uh, really good, strong participation across all age levels uh, where it was uh, seen as a, a strength. And um, also, uh, I suppose, even this process was mentioned as a strength, looking forward, building on success and continually improving where the where the, what was used there. Um, so uh, that, was a, that was a great conversation. Second question then was about um, the vision, wh- where we want to be. 
uh, we spoke a little bit about supporting all children of all abilities and the idea of you know including everyone throughout all of the grade levels the whole way up and a point was made about you know trying to keep players who begin in the academy under sevens right the way up uh, through the age groups um, as much as we can. Um, outreaching to the wider community was spoken about being that type of club that it's great that we're all seen as being part of the jocks but also monster boys at large and how we can how we can be part of support the wider community and being outreaching in that way and then particular attention towards the uh, players between 17 and 21 and um, because of the stru age group structures um, at the moment and uh, we really need to seriously look at this and um, particularly for ladies um, from 17 onwards as there tends to be a, a huge drop off there of participation so we spoke about that and then the final question um what would success look like we just we we just got to speak about increasing participation levels across all age groups and keeping the players together as much as possible and keeping the involvement of ladies right the way through um in particular after the 17 years as i mentioned so that's um that's it but if anybody else in my group wants to jump in and add anything to that please do that's brilliant feedback, Paddy. Yeah, really good conversations there. Yeah, some some really good stuff. And folks, just to kind of uh, just just let you know, obviously, you know, we'll take note of all these and, and just some brilliant ideas, even that I hadn't even thought of or, or a group I certainly hadn't that we'll be be looking at and trying to put in good stuff. Um, second group maybe Crouchy. Yeah, room two is Yvonne. I think she's having a little bit of technical issues, so maybe she won't be the one that speaks for you unless she's available. Uh, Stretchy. Cormac Callaghan, Paul McDonald, Brian Halligan, Niall Callaghan. So if someone wants to come in and just give us a bit of a lowdown. Uh, Yvonne is not on. Um, no. She was taking the notes, but uh, I give it a <laughs> <laughs> No, she's back oh, on I'm there here. now. She might I'm be able to hear you. I'm back. Are you looking for room two? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was in the room, uh, the breakout room of Cormac and Brian and the two Niles and Paul. Um, so we just kind of, we came across like this recurring theme, which was just inclusiveness across the three categories. So like values, vision and the culture. Um, so the notes that we made for the values were like a real sense of community. Um, that's kind of something we think uh, makes us unique. Um, just being inclusive and like the volumes of players that we have involved in the in the club um, and just I suppose making sure as an organization that it's kind of progressive um, and all the players are happy so that's what we had um, for our values um, our vision again like so that whole idea of kind of inclusiveness just came up again and that we would give opportunities for everyone um, and obviously have having success along with that, so being a successful club um, and lifelong participation as well. So, you know, the, everyone can get involved at any stage. So even if you finish playing with a team at a certain point that maybe you could get involved with coaching or, you know, volunteering or something else. So that was a, a good vision that we had come up with. Um, and that all the kids that we're coaching now at the minute, that they have a chance to, I suppose, just reach their their maximum potential um, and that we can all help them with that. Um, and then for the culture, we just said to hopefully get stronger as a club each year. So there is always progression um, and to just always work hard um, and yeah, inclusiveness then as well. So that was it from room two. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks, Melanie and Yvonne. Yeah. Great stuff there. Yeah. And Crouchy, was it room three that she was or four? Um, Yvonne was in group two, room two. So do you want me to call in someone from three now? Yeah. Three, yeah. So you had yeah, yeah. Ollie, Sam Kenny, Anne Marie, Guest, Elma, and Guest. So anyone from that group wants to jump in, switch the mic on. Yeah, Craig, I can talk for, for the group. Um, so we had Ollie, Sam, Mary Claire, Elma and myself in, in there just to cover some of the guests. So a, a lot of similar themes that have been shared already, but I think I can just highlight the couple of discussion points we had. And it was great actually to, to get everyone's perspective. 
for values, I think what hit home was, I suppose, the community spirit and the connection that our club drives in an area. I, I know we're rural, but people gravitate to, to, to Nave Martin as a centre point. The club is, is full of really good people. They're out there to be, ha- I suppose, support the club the best way they can, whether a supporter, a player or a helper, and be there for the kids. So like, we find all the coaches are there to be do right by the kids and th- there's already strong values there. But how do we you know, get that? We'd say 95% of the time. How do we get that 100% of the time? I suppose from a vision perspective, we want, the, I suppose, the, our club to be bringing out the best, in their, be, have our kids the best version of themselves on the field and whatever way we do or impact that. We also thought about putting ourselves in the kids' shoes and what they want to get out of it. And they go up for camaraderie, for friendship, to, to interact. But also as a parent, why would I send my kids up there? It's a safe place. There's encouragement. It helps them build life skills. So, you know, there are really strong areas that we'd like to see the club, I suppose, progress in. And I, the, I suppose the comment about equal or inclusion. So every, everybody's treated equally as, as, as they go up. From a success perspective, what we really saw is like what we'd want to be known for and um, that Nave Martin had a positive influence on our on, on, on everyone that takes part whether that's coming up through the ranks and um, being involved as a supporter or a helper and, and walk away 30 40 years down the line and say I enjoy being part of Nave Martin also the other sign of success would be I suppose no dropouts and um, maintaining the, the participation the whole way through across all gr- age groups and across uh, men and women and um, and I suppose a happy child when they, they walk home out of or come home from training or a football match. Yeah, I'll eat her the rest. Excellent, excellent stuff, yeah. I don't, did I miss anything to the rest of the guys? No, that was yeah, spot on. Right. Yeah, spot on. No, happy with that, Emily. Fair play. Thank you. Brilliant, brilliant, yeah. Fantastic, and, and that's that's a bit of this stuff that it's you know that it's stimulating to, and and thoughts, and you know sometimes we just don't get that opportunity. You're so busy as a group to come and, and have these conversations. So hopefully they're, they're very valuable. Um, Craig, you, room four. I think it was it was uh, Ray, John, uh, and Dinger. And we were kind of overseeing or listening to that. Yeah, room four didn't yeah, really right. happen. Was just lost, so, so, so yeah. So maybe John, do you want to just give a kind of brief summary, of, or I don't mind uh, on kind of some of the thoughts, or I thought you come up with a couple of of, of of good things just to maybe highlight going forward. Maybe a challenge was one you you mentioned. If you want to just talk a little briefly about that. Yeah, it's, well, look, we we weren't obviously in the same vein as the other groups in terms of going through the questions. We we, we probably didn't start as uh, until later in the com- in in at the time was eaten up, I suppose. Um. Yeah, look. One of the things that I was, I was, um, one of the things that I was thinking about was, uh, was that, and it was touched on by some of the other people there. You're looking to develop everyone there to, to everyone to their own potential, and um, so that's some guy's potential maybe to make a contribution at his age at a club team underage. That may be the best that he can achieve, and another guy may turn out to be, you know, senior inter county standard. So you have. People with potential to be elite players, and you have people with potential just to make a contribution uh, to the team, so uh, or to the club, or to feel part of what's happening. Like I, I'm not talking about um, you. You you want to have everyone involved and feel part of the club, but I suppose if you're talking about players, if they're going out onto the field, that they they have the confidence that they know that when they go out, they they can contribute, and that can be um, the one person's potential. So when you're when you're trying to achieve everyone's potential and challenge every player, there's natural conflict that will occur. And um, so between, if you look at some of the players that I mentioned about some of our players that, that have progressed on to play senior county for Louth or whatever, all of those players, even even last year's minor final, you've played players that would have played a couple of years over or up in age group, and naturally then that means that there's people. Who are at that age that that aren't on the field as much maybe because another guy is getting challenged as well and i think the challenge then that we have is to make sure that we're keeping everyone involved and everyone challenged and that's not going to be an easy task for any 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 manager and the numbers that we have in the jocks are great and um, but they do set that they do make that an additional challenge so i think that's where that's where I kind of uh, 
that's that's the that's the the challenge I see. Brilliant, brilliant, John. Yeah, because we're actually just gonna we're gonna talk about a lot of the things you've touched on there. So that's deadly. Thanks a million, John. So. Apologies there. Uh, thanks a million, John. That's obviously top class stuff, and you're touching on a lot of the things that, that we're going to mention here just in, in the next couple of slides. So look, I suppose here's just a kind of what I have as, as basically a, a triangle or a, a, of consistency or a key to, to, to sustaining that success. So if we look at the bottom, like a lot of it was was values were difficult, but I suppose what are our coaching values? That's That's probably what we're getting at there. Like, how are we going to do this? So all the things that we mentioned are, are really, really important and vital for us going forward. But, you know, what does that look like? So for us and kind of look, this this didn't come about just, you know, willy nilly. There was a lot of work on in since last June on this and kind of looking at models of best practice and in talent development and so on. And one of the key things that keeps cropping up is that idea of focusing on every individual. You know, if we focus on the team you know, individuals get lost along the way. So it's meeting the needs of everyone. And that is a challenge. But I suppose that leads us on to the second part of the triangle, which is the behaviour. So, you know, we need to change maybe our behaviour of our coaches, maybe our players, our committee, our parents, that we're all singing off that same hymn sheet to get to that top. And I suppose the bottom line at the top of any pyramid is the culture. But without these things leading in, you can't just decide to change a culture. So culture is your your values, your beliefs, your behaviours. OK, and obviously, at the end of the day, su sustaining success is that culture that we have of coaching and playing. So, you know, Crouchy's been heavily involved in this with Lencer GA. So, so their model of coaching and player pathways is a thing called Taurus. And of course, you know, that, that meaning journey. So for each of those things, they have a principle. OK, and I don't know how well you can see that on the screen, but, you know, the T standing for testing and challenging. The U for understands the players at the centre of the game, provides individualised development, so it's player-centred, a lot of what the feedback we already had was. That our sessions uh, resemble the game, that they're games-based. The A standing for that there's all players are involved all the time, lots of touches, lots of decisions, and the S, that it should be enjoyable. So I suppose we took that and we want to kind of make our own slant on it. So with this idea of the jocks way, you know, we've left it here and maybe something to go home and consider or, you know, maybe this evening you come up with something, maybe use the WhatsApp group as a as a stimulus for, for conversations to maybe if we can come up with our own acronym, you know, of what we stand for, what our principles are. So think about that. You know, I think that maybe we'd like to create that ourselves. OK, going forward. And um, sometimes a philosophy, we're too focused on having visual kind of aids that aren't used, but perhaps going forward you know we could have something like that this is a brand for us the jock's way of doing things that that each of those words um you know makes us you know gives us our principles that as coaches and players and committee and parents and everybody that we adhere to so you know Crouch, you i'll just I'll pass it over to you you have a little bit of activity just to, just to go through it with, with people that's all right yep yep and it's just it's probably reiterating the point that we're all seem to be making and it keeps cropping up and I just wanted to refresh it again in your head is that every one of us in this club is involved on a, on a journey a, a similar journey we start at nursery we 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 kind of get to a level that we're at now that we're almost facilitators in 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 the club and um it's just important to remember that no matter what stage you're at being involved is massively important and being proud of who we are and where we're going and be proud of the culture we have built in the club, okay, over time. And it doesn't matter where you are on the pathway, that everybody should feel that, you know. Um, so I'm just going to give you, um, I'm going to put you back into the breakout rooms here with a question, okay. And I don't have a visual for the question, but I, I'm going to read it out to you now. Just um, We're going to be in the rooms for about two or three minutes. And I just want you to start a bit of a discussion in, in the uh, rooms, okay? So the aim of what I'm doing here is I want to potentially put you in a scenario that uh, that involves you using a club philosophy, okay? So the question is, if you're playing, if you're the coach or the manager of a team that's in the under 13 county championship, you're five points up at halftime, 
do you bring on your so-called weaker players on the bench in the second half for a run? Okay, so you're in the thir- under 13 county championship. You're five points up at half time. Do you bring your so-called weaker players on? Possibly at the detriment of losing the game. Okay, so I'm going to move you into the, the breakout rooms again for about two or three minutes. Is this the final, Crouchy? Um, no. Okay. Not two or three minutes, folks. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to use the comment box. Okay, Lenny, that should be it now. If you want to take over your group there. Okay, so um, maybe Dinger, to start with you. What, what's your thoughts on that situation, or what would you do, or have you been in that situation before? Or so I think, Craig, you were in a semi final or something like that. Is it like it's a championship game of significance? Championship game, yeah, yeah, it's a okay. championship game, knockout competition. Thanks very much, Lenny. Can you see me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, honestly, no. I'd leave it as is. I'd leave it as is because I think, and I kind of have been in a situation before. Not, not maybe just like that. If you do that and lose the game. Not the only 15 players that's on the pitch, to every one of them, including the subs that didn't get on, uh, will be disappointed. Where you have to kind of look at throughout the year. If you develop your team and use your team throughout the year, there won't be as much as a build-up of why am I not playing on it. If you give them a, a good chance throughout the year, and listen, when it comes to championship football, you try and play your best team. That goes without saying. But if you use your team throughout the year, and then players, as you said there, Craig, that we are, are on the bench that so called a so called weaker players. If you get them through through playing through the leagues, through friendlies, through the whole lot, they won't be as disappointed. But in what you're saying, yeah, I would leave the team as it is. Maybe other people have different ways you can shout in there. Yeah. Cheers, Dinger. I, I'd have to go along with Dinger right? I, 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 on that, and that my my thinking on it is that I I, was very, I think I said something to you, Crouchy, fairly similar. That you're going to be playing them in challenge matches. They're going to be training in the same group. They're going to be playing in league matches. But then when it comes to championship, I think you have to try and win the championship. And I don't think anyone benefits by by giving token time. That's my honest opinion. You want to give meaningful time to people. So I don't think throwing on, on five subs and Cost and right, for people. Um, I don't think that would. I don't think anyone benefits from that. And then, like, even if you're talking about life skills, and it was mentioned earlier on, like, the resilience of knowing that you have to work hard and you have to keep going and to come back again. And uh, I think that's an, that's an important life skill. You have to. So a lot of people. Would, would, lads, lads, can you see me there? No. Yeah. 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 Hi, hey, hey, yes, lads. Uh, uh, just want to throw something out there. I do agree, which is uh, in one respect of winning the championship game. No problems with that at all. Just quick question: like, like there has to be a few scenarios to this as well. Like, we'll say, you, John, you were talking there earlier about uh, so-called elite players coming through at underage and challenging them. What in that scenario? You say you're in under thirteen game, right? Just say for argument's sake, the coach decides then. To bring a really, really strong under eleven player that needs to be challenged, and he throws them in there ahead of other guys at that age group. Like, are you compromising the older lads to bring on a younger lad as well? I, I'd be totally for uh, challenging lads as well. But like, when it comes to an under thirteen team, and then you're bringing the younger lad up to win a championship game, is that in the scenario, or is it just lads at their own age? If you know what I mean, there, lads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair point, Ray. Um, I suppose, and look, I'll probably preempt what I'm going to talk about, folks, is, you know, at the end of the day, well, I think, we're, sorry, I think they're breaking up the, the room, so so I might just wait till everybody comes out. Is that fair enough? And, and I might address that question okay. and feedback. Yeah. yeah, brilliant stuff, Ray. Thanks.
So is that everyone back now, Crouchy? Not just yet. The room three is just still closing. Must be getting heated. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to close it. Uh, right, that's them all closed there now. Oh, okay. Liverpool's on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so listen, I see a bit of steam coming out of computers there and it must, it must have caused a little bit of uh, a controversy, this one, but trust, trust Crouchy to store the pot, you know, wouldn't be like him anyway. But um, Crouchy, do you want to come in on that before we move on? Or? Yep, yep. So just the idea of that is you're not going to get a straight answer straight from a three minute conversation there um, the reason why I asked it is to just get you in the mind frame of these next few slides that uh, Lionel is going to show us and the mind frame you're in now with that discussion you're after having these next two or three slides is going to hopefully clear a little bit up in your head about where we potentially could be going down the line can I just say something there before you start the slides? I think it would be interesting to hear what opinions were from the groups before you go into the slides, maybe, maybe or after them. I just think it would be interesting to hear what the general consensus was there. If you want to throw them into the comment box there at yeah, the side, the if you've, box, yeah. I think well, there, I, should, there don't need to be really two or three answers anyway. So if you want to just throw, if you have an opinion, you want to well, put it up, throw it into the uh, comment box to the side and we'll keep uh, moving on with the yeah. slides okay. yeah listen i'm conscious of time so i, I will fire on here just in the group that we had like we, we had good conversation the consensus was i think with the group that generally speaking there wouldn't be changes made that they were there to, to again don't be putting words in people's mouth that uh you know at the end of the day it was championship and and they would hope that they got meaningful game time during the year now there was a question posed um Say if there was an eleven-year-old that felt needed to be challenged, do they get game time? Do they not? Um, and and I suppose that that was where we were at. That that at the end of the day, that that kind of that mentality of, of of trying to trying to get over the line, or how do we challenge those other players? So, you know, although again, don't only putting words in, in the mouth of of our group, that basically that it, it was with a heavy heart, you know, um, that but that probably we wouldn't make the, the changes. That was kind of the consensus. So listen, I'm going to fire ahead. Um, I'll be straight up here. I'll probably cause a little bit of controversy what I'm going to go ahead with. Um, I'm not saying what I'm saying is 100% right. But as I said, there is a little bit of research put into this. And um, I suppose it's probably how we define success and probably just getting you to think about it. And if you can go, I always find these workshops if you can go home thinking of one thing or taking one useful thing from, I think it, it, it's beneficial. So listen, I'm going to work away and uh, we might come back to those conversations at the end if that's OK. So. Um, yeah, so full screen mode, yeah. Just OK, make you share your screen first, Lainey. I'll share your screen, yeah. Sorry, folks. So. OK, so. We're getting stimulated and thinking about uh, the jocks way there. So if we have a little look and see. Um, so I did a lot of research on this. And I suppose here's kind of some stark figures. So this is uh, the idea of player retention figures. OK. So as you can see, and this was a study done a couple of years ago with the GA. And what we see is that the age of 12 are really, really good as an organization. And the jocks is no different at getting people through the door. Really, really good at that. But then from the age of 12 to 21, it just nosedives and 58% fall away from the sport. Now, look, that could be for a multitude of reasons. But, you know, I suppose the ultimate goal, and a lot of people alluded to it already, is as a club, we want to make sure that those coming in at four to six in 15 and 20, 25 years time are still active members of the club, whether that be in a playing capacity a coaching capacity, a committee capacity, refereeing, selling lotto tickets, whatever it is that there's an involvement. So why is like why is there that drop off? So what they found is that why kids actually stay in the sport is four kind of goes down to four key things. So the first one is the actual competence. In other words, the skills. So that makes our job really important as coaches that we're coaching the skills. I tell you straight up from coaching, as I said, at inter-county level at, at, in the junior championship two years ago in Leinster. 
I was expecting, I was getting like, you know, really strong adult players from across the county. I was still spending a huge amount of time on the skills. Okay. And even Crouchy will tell you, the, the, the kind of mindset that at inter-county it's, it's really advanced training I can tell you straight up it's the basics it's the basics that are done so so well so we can't lose sight of those fundamental skills right the way through the second thing is that the perceived comp- competence of kids in other words the belief that they give now how do we do that as coaches well very simple it's the environment that we create that positive mindset like enthusiasm is infectious and it causes it, it, co- it costs nothing but you you can't underestimate giving praise and encouragement to our kids and what that does for a kid's confidence. And they mightn't be the best, but it's that perception is, is what's important. And how do we do that? And that ties into Crouchy's question. Like, we have to really have a think about it under 13 level. Is the most important thing winning? That goes back to our vision. And, you know, we might have a little bit of an answer to that as we go on. But how do we give them that confidence if we don't give them the opportunity? So I've got a lot of feedback of playing challenge matches and so on. But is are they meaningful, challenging environments to meet those players? The flip side of that is how do we meet the kind of really high achievers at that stage? And, and I'll get to that in a moment. Confidence, obviously, that, that kind of ties into that. And I suppose the resilience. And an argument that could be thrown is, well, we make them resilient by not playing them. And, and you know, that life is tough and so on. But... You know, at 13, 12, is that really what we should be doing? Is winning the most important thing? You know, that, 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 that's, up, that's up for, for discussion. So I suppose for us, as, uh, in terms of a jock, with our jocks hat on, it's creating a positive environment to play and stay in the game. That really should be our long-term goal. And winning should be a byproduct of all the rest of it. So in terms of our long-term foundation, this is just a little bit of a... A, a kind of, I know it's not perfect in terms of the quality isn't fantastic. I'll fire it up on the WhatsApp later on. But what we have here is that idea of early success. Okay. So what very often what we see is what makes a good coach? Oh, it's such and such. They won the under 15 championship last year. They won the under 13 or the under Fela, the under 14. They're a brilliant coach. And maybe there's no doubt within that. But we're looking really at early success there, short term success. And yeah, we want to win, but we have to realize that the way we coach now is going to have repercussions going forward. And if we're about development, and that was the word that came up in every single group, are we really developing our younger players if we're not giving them those opportunities? So what we see the correlation here is early success. Okay, so what does early success look like? So let's say the under-13 championship. Well, what happens is that, you know, you've trained really hard. Early start of training competitions equals success, absolutely that they specialize, that there's no other sport being played. It's purely GEA. Yeah, that tends to lead to early success. Okay, that it's really competitive. The best players play, you know, your strongest team all the time. Yeah, that's an indicator for under 13, 14 success. Training really hard, really intensely, more sessions, maybe an SNC program in the winter. Absolutely, that will give you early success. And then that volume of training three, four times a week. Absolutely guaranteed for success at an early stage. But have a look at the right hand side, the senior success. So the O there means that there is absolutely no correlation. So these, this is done by Anya McNamara and um, based at a DCU in terms of, of studies on this. And what they found was that, you know, in that conf- competitive environment, picking your best team at that age, there was absolutely no correlation to success at senior level. Now, in terms of an early start to training and competition and really being competitive at that age, what they found was it actually had a negative effect. And we'll get to that. The specialization of players at an early age, so only playing GA, had a negative effect. The intensity of the training at that young age had a negative effect. And the aggravated training volume had a negative effect. Okay, so then here was in other sports, OK, so if they played other sports and you can see that that all added to success at senior level. So what we need to look at is our pathway. We need to focus on the long term. If we're all saying that what we're all about as a club is that long term development, is that retention of players. Well, this should help guide our coaching. OK, so. You know, really what we want to look at is to win in development terms. Like I'm thinking of some of our players, particularly that played other sports at, at a young age. 
So if you look at it, the starting team, uh, uh, the men senior champ did this year, okay? Take Stephen Campbell as an example. Stephen Campbell, you know, played soccer at a very high level underage. You know, there would have been times it was a struggle to get him on the GA field, okay? And you can see the progress he made. Likewise, JP, you know, held up as probably arguably the best player the club has ever produced. Again, look, at played soccer at a really high level underage. Owen Callan is on this call as well. Had his heart broke for loud underage trying to get him playing soccer. And I think eventually under 16, we got, we got hell of him. Okay, so there are just a couple of examples of, you know, where specialisation didn't necessarily occur. Yes, they played GA, but they played other sports. And you can see that they're kind of a lot of the mainstays of the senior team that we've had at, they're going by. And I suppose what I have here is this idea that, you know, the jocks way or what we are looking to kind of, I suppose, think about is that it's not a marathon, not a sprint. And what we often see is that early leaders don't often make it. So I don't know if you, 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 know, you know who each of these people are. So starting left to right, that's Lindsay Peach, OK, former ladies Dublin footballer, has um, represented Ireland at basketball level. And is currently uh, an Irish rugby player playing with Leinster in Ireland. Okay. Then we have Sarah Rowe, again, would have played soccer underage at Ireland. And I suppose probably the three main ex men examples there uh, are, are good ones to highlight as well in terms of a different way. So Brian Fenton, Lee Keegan, Connor McManus. And what are the three things that they have in common? Well, none of them represented their county at minor level. So if we're talking about the development side of things, we're talking about the elite players. Brian Fender could arguably go, go down as the greatest GA player of all time and never represent a double at that, at that underage. So what we have to look at it is that long-term idea, okay? We need to develop these players. And one of the things that we see in, in research is the relative age effect. In other words, from the ages of, let's say, 12 to 17 or 18, that the leaders at that stage are those born in the first quadrant of the year, the first three months, okay? And the reason for that is they have a better chance of being successful. They're usually physically more developed. But what we tend to see is that they don't make it to the very top. Why is that? Because maybe they neglect the range of skills they need to be successful adults. And that's about the developmental process. So they're not going to unconscious at a time. This is a note that's taken from the same paper entitled I can send it on to anyone who's of interest, the rocky road to success. And what they essentially did was they divided across a wide range of sport into three groups of people. You had the super champions who were the 60 plus caps, maybe at international level, five world medals, etc. The champions who maybe had three caps, one medal, but operate at a high level. And then the almost, the almost were really, really good, promising young players, but maybe in a GA context or whatever, just never made no more than division two as an adult. So, Two things I just want to highlight is, first of all, with the supers, what did we see? That often it was slow progress for them and very bumpy progression. Whereas with the almost, and this goes into the challenge, oh, they were a great minor, they were unbelievable under 60. But then we didn't meet their needs as well. So I suppose what we're trying to think of here is how do we challenge these players and have that growth mindset? The other thing that we saw was that they were strong but challenging coaches. OK, in the really super elite. So in term and then the, sorry, the last one I highlight is that they had a positive reaction to challenges and setbacks and they used that to stimulate. Whereas the almost it was a negative, oh, that coach didn't like me, why me? And playing the blame game to a certain degree. So this is something that um, some of you may be familiar with this guy. This is Dennis Bergkamp, the former Arsenal footballer who's who was heading up the uh, the Ajax Academy. So. The Ajax model, um, you know, started by Johan Cruyff was a, you know, the Ajax football team regard, very well regarded as very technical players. Uh, and their whole model is producing young players to sell when they get to, 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 to senior adult level to reinvest in that, in, in, in that youth setup. And that's their model. So, you know, in terms of challenging, I thought this was an interesting thing of how we might challenge some of those players that are, you know, in, in terms of a lot of people said maybe playing another age group, maybe something like this could, could work. Sometimes you put your strongest player on the bench just to let others shine, to develop that resilience. Maybe you put a right-footed player who can't do anything with his left foot on the left side, force him to use his left foot. Of course, in that game, you'll probably lose because you don't use your strongest players in the strongest position. But in the end, you have a player who used his left foot when he was 12 and 13 and 14, and he can use both feet when he comes into the first team. That's what we have at Ajax. So again, that is the example of the long-term strategy and what they're thinking. So... When we asked you that question, Crouchy asked that question about the under-13s. 
and that winning mentality. But maybe let's flip the question another way. Should we be thinking, should our goal just be to win? Is that what success is, is deemed? So some of you may be familiar, some of you might be with the Tony Forrest competition. So that is an All-Ireland hurling competition across all counties, okay, at under 14 level. So the question I have, and the reason I'm going to use that as an example, is should we use competition? Like, How do we define winning and losing? Is it just the result? But what we saw with the Tony Forrest is that in 80% of the titles have been won by five counties. And no winner of the Tony Forrestal under 14, four years later, went on to win a minor, All-Ireland minor title. And only five of those that won it under 16 won the minor two years later. So what does that tell you? It tells you that there's no consistent connection, okay, with winning at under 14 and under 13 with that correlation with long-term success. So it's perhaps having that long-term view. Dublin is the same. Dublin club football, no winner to fail at, at Dublin under 14 level has gone on to win a, a, a county minor title. So I suppose what we're looking at here is that the competition drives our coaching behaviours. But perhaps those players that are left behind in that under 13, that scenario that Crouchy posed, you know, they're not getting those learning opportunities to grow. So at the end of the day, we have to look at coaching the player of tomorrow. So... You know, competition can be great. And maybe this is, I don't have the answer to this, but we can think about it creatively. So, you know, there's our structure in the GA, our child, youth into adult, our child playing lots of internal games, lots of blitzes, meaningful games. And what do we see? Not a drop off. The super games, a relatively new initiative, playing lots of internal games, promoting development, creating recreational games program. And then the adult playing lots of challenge matches. So I suppose what we're looking at is how do we use that? So you're familiar with, I'm sure, these four teams, okay? And so with the dubs, as a second means much to put them up on the top left-hand corner. Apologies, Man United fans. Liverpool there in the top right. Our Limerick hurlers from this year and our All Blacks from 2011. And what all those have in, in common is listen to their management, listen to their leadership. What did they all speak about? Start with the All Blacks. The All Blacks would have been known, obviously, as the best rugby players. But between 1991 and 2011, they never won a Rugby World Cup. And what they began, they had, they, they had a disastrous 20, 2007 campaign and they stripped it all back and, and, and had a look. And basically what they come up with is a very simple mantra. Good people makes good All Blacks. OK, and that's something that you hear the dub speak about, that idea of humility. You see the Limerick Hurlers as well. That It's not about developing players. It's about developing people and developing the individual. So the question is, how do we do that? So I'm going to just show you a short little video clip now. OK, I'm going to stop here for one second. And I want you to kind of consider kind of some of the things that are cropping up. So. Apologies again in advance, Man United fans, but uh, needs needs must here. So I'll have a little look at this and then we'll get a little bit of feedback at the end. Make sure, Liney, you, you share the right screen. That's just your teams. Maybe okay. unshare it and then share the, the video. Yeah. No. That any different that coming up there? Not yet, no. No, just HL. So okay. just make sure you have Sorry the, now, folks. the video open as one of your tabs and then when you share the screen just click the right tile. Okay. Give it one more go. Yeah. Okay. Third time lucky. Is that it, yeah? yeah? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay, lovely. Volume on it. So how do we do that? 
Hugh, I wonder if you if you plug out your earphones, it might play the video with, with volume through the share screen. Yeah. Any joy? I can hear that, yeah, yeah but it's quite it. low. Okay. Look, I think it mightn't work, so what I might just do is I might just fire that in the WhatsApp later. Okay. That might just be the best. Um, I'll just last, just check if there is a share send option. Uh, there's no option to share and send there, Crouch, is there? I don't think so, no. Not that I know of. Maybe just throw it in the WhatsApp later. WhatsApp later. Okay, so basically, I suppose what you're going to see is a stock at our presentations. Apologies about that. Basically, what it is is, folks, it's Jurgen Klopp speak, you know, and what the he talks, he talks about the culture of the group, and he talks about this idea of building a staff positive environment. So, in terms of the jocks way, and, and this this would have been what what came up in the video is that leaders create culture and us being the leaders as coaches, the culture drives the behaviour and, and ultimately the behaviour drives the performance. You'll have seen this before. This is the O2 model. Okay, so this is the TTTP, the tactical, the technical, the team play, and uh, the, the physical. Okay, and you would have saw that in the shared folder. So, you know, this is Maya Angelou, and, and she was a very famous American poet and civil rights activist, and she probably hits the nail on the head with what she says here that, you know, a lot of us get bogged down, and myself included, of having the perfect training session. But ultimately, you know, the technical aspects of our coaching are often forgot by our players. So people forget what you said. They forget what you did, but they don't forget how you made them feel. And I think that really encapsulates what we'll be trying to do. But we don't have to be the best coach, but how we treat people with respect and dignity. And a lot of this is going on anyway, but I really think that you can't underestimate. So I suppose in terms of going forward, what we're looking at is that idea of creating better coaches and our better coaches will create our better players. And to understand that, it's creating our pathway. So going forward to use that Taurus model, how are we going to create that pathway? So the children aspect, the play, the learn, the youth, the learn to come, that maybe ties into that development between the children and youth that under 13 stage. And then at adults, we have that compete to win. That, you know, in terms of our rules, and the end of the goal games policy is aligned to the end of the child stage, that play to learn, and it's just that that, from youth to adult, maybe the focus or the, the winning situation. So, I suppose what I want to think about here is that, often back to this idea of the jock's way, how are we going to go about things? Well, for me, that idea of the long-term agenda is where it's at because they don't have to be mutually exclusive. If we are producing the most technically efficient players and retaining uh, as many as we can, winning is going to be a natural byproduct of that. And I suppose what we have to think about is this idea of the job. So what I want you to do is go home this evening, have a little think, use the WhatsApp as a stimulus for this. What, what is our jocks way? What is this acronym going to stand for? So in terms, of, I suppose, what my findings are, or, you know, or our findings, sorry, of the group that are, would be in terms of our thoughts, again, this is our only thoughts of any of the research that we've done, is the long-term agenda. That shift from short-term success to long-term plan, and it's not easy. I've been there, and I can empathize and totally understand, and I've probably made decisions as a coach that, you know, when I'm re reflecting and going through this, I say, you know what, I should have done this differently. So I suppose what we need to focus is that appropriate development and not early success. Okay, that maybe that it's not that important. I know it is as a coach at the time. I've been there winning that competition. And if we're talking about developing a coaching pathway, and ultimately, I suppose what our goal here is to produce, be self-sufficient as a club to produce our own coaches, that we're not having to, to bring in outside coaches who don't understand their philosophy and so on. That's no disrespect. You know, we've had some fantastic coaches and, and it's needed in the club. But, you know, I suppose... We need to give our coaches something to aspire to as well. And we need to be, if we're all singing off the same hymn sheet, if we're all adopting this philosophy that we know, hey, I know you didn't do, you didn't win the under 13 championship, but that doesn't make you a bad coach. So I think we need to move away from this idea of, you know, 
oh, they won such and such, therefore they're a good coach. So think about that. So within that, it's, it's developing the individual, the ongoing development. And really and truly, for me, it's, it's summed up like you develop people, that's a priority. And the, you develop the people first and the player looks after itself. That's where we're at here with the joined up thinking on philosophy and winning doing the right thing. Like, as I said, it's a, it's a going to be a byproduct, hopefully, of what we do. But really, the player attention, that's kind of this vibe we got. It's the key. And this is one that was summed up lovely for me by um, an interview with uh, a Limerick Academy coach. So Limerick Horn at the moment is on the crest of a wave. And kind of, they really, uh, they, they're a really incredible coach. And I'd buy check them out, you know, talks on YouTube, Paul Kinnerick. And basically, they were all singing off the same hymn sheet. They had this philosophy in place and they're, they're reaping the benefits now. But it's that idea of delayed gratification. You know, as coaches, Jesus, it's great for the ego to win the under 40 and under 30. I know myself, you know, in secondary school, one of the best homes I had in coaching, we won under 13 Ulster schools. Unbelievable. Brilliant day. But when I look back on it, you know, and, and we did try and implement, I know, slightly different in school context, that developmental focus. And actually, the results then kind of were a byproduct of that. But I suppose what we really want to see is that our young players, with that love and commitment of playing football in 10, 15 years, and that's the, grat- the only gratification we should make. I suppose really what we're looking to do is give them the tools to be better players in their league. That's, I suppose, where we're so I refer back to it. You'll be glad to know I'm at the end of this. Like, what is coaching? And like to me, that's such a fantastic photograph that really encapsulates everything. How much you alluded to it the last day. But if you look at Alan there, he's intense. He's in the zone. He has his Nave Martin top on, the colours. He's his whistle, his stopwatch. Look at the kids behind. They're organised. Smiles. It's like you know the Pied Piper coming into town. I'll follow him with smiles. And to me, in my coaching journey, that's what sums it up. It's that feeling of 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 making a difference. That kind of higher purpose of, of, of what we're going for. Back to my earlier slide, that you know, North Star that guides us. And if we can all sing off the same hymn sheet, I, I've no doubt in my mind that, that that we'll be really successful on our journey. So suppose you know, in wrapping up. Hopefully this evening what we just did was stimulate talk, stimulate an idea of where do we want to go as a club? What is our philosophy going to be? So it's not going to happen tonight. We don't just go, right, that's it, decide that's what we're going for. It's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing consultation process. And maybe go home and think about this jock's way. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions or queries, we'll leave it open now. But I suppose apart from that, listen, thanks a million for listening, you know, hopefully, as I'd always say in these things, if you could take one thing from tonight and it stimulates a little bit of thought, well, well then that would be my job done. So we might leave it open for, for a couple of questions or queries. As I said, I don't have all the answers. I don't claim to have all the answers, but I suppose it, it's just that we're working together collaboratively to hopefully create a more sustainable environment. As we said at the start, we're doing so many really great things in the club, but it's trying to aim to be the very, very best that we can be no doubt the calibre of people we have on the call and in the club, it's getting the maximizing the very, very best for that. Hopefully, as I said, we've got something out of this. Brilliant stuff, Lenny. Brilliant. And then the comments uh, the comments of the side, you haven't seen them yet yourself, but there's um, great conversations that was gone as well. So just one more point, I suppose, to add for you all is go and have the conversation with yourselves. It doesn't have to be true of us. It doesn't have to be true of teams call. So you know what I mean? Use the WhatsApp. You have each other's numbers. If you want to start a conversation, start a conversation with someone because the only way you probably learn is um, by speaking to each other. Okay, we're not going to be able to give you the, give you guys the direct answer, but speaking and 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 talking to people in the same experience is definitely going to help you. Okay, so well done, Liney, and we'll just leave the mic open for a few minutes if anyone wants to jump in with any questions. That was really good, Craig and Q. Lots of stuff, things to think about there that I hadn't thought about. I thought it was very interesting. Thanks a million. Good stuff, Emma. No problem. Thank you.